Antivirus rescue disks are one of the most powerful ways to rid your computer of viruses that are dug in despite your antivirus program. Some viruses even resist scanning in safe mode with other programs such as Malwarebytes. The problem is that these viruses are so far into your hard drive that your computer system and antivirus can't recognize them as such or that the virus has a an active method to defeat your scans or attempts to disinfect. One powerful strategy to defeat these viruses is to take the hard drive out of the picture altogether by booting and running your computer from an optical disk or other removable media. The hard drive is no longer active in running the computer so the temporary operating system can scan and delete the inactive viruses. One of the most popular is the Kaspersky Rescue Disk. Download and burn the Kaspersky Rescue Disk with an uninfected computer. Or if your computer is still able to, you can try downloading and burning with it. Use your favorite search engine. If you use more than one, maybe we'll avoid having to deal with a monopoly and search providers. Type in Kaspersky Rescue Disk and choose the Major Geeks site. Kaspersky has its own site, but the Major Geeks download is better marked and it's easy to see the disk version number. Left mouse click to download and asked, save the file where you know you can find it. Here's the disk image or ISO file that we will now burn to disk. Place your blank CD or DVD in the uninfected computer. You can do this at the library in one of their computers if you don't have another one at home or you can't use it. Autoplay pops up in a window with the choice to burn the disk using Windows Explorer. If you take this route, be sure to delete the window INI file that Windows Explorer puts there automatically. If you don't, it won't be a boot disk. Make sure that the only file you burn to the disk is the Kaspersky ISCO file. We won't take this route, so close the window. Go to where your Kaspersky ISO file is and left mouse click on it one time only so it highlights. Then right mouse click on the highlight for a menu and left mouse click burn disk image. The Windows disk image burner pops up. It automatically chooses your optical drive. If you have more than one, pick the one with the blank disk. Check the verify box and then click burn. Wait some minutes for the disk to burn and verify. When done, eject the disk if it doesn't automatically do so. Place the Kaspersky Rescue disk in the infected computer. Ignore any autoplay windows as we'll be booting up in a moment. If your computer usually connects wirelessly, you have to connect to the internet with an ethernet cable. Wireless will not work. Plug the other end of the Ethernet cable into the back of your cable modem, router, or switch. If you're using the network Ethernet socket at the library, make sure you're logged onto their network before you restart reboot your machine. Make sure your computer doesn't fall asleep during the scan. Go to your control panel, systems and security, power options, and make sure your power plan doesn't allow the computer to sleep. Be sure to change this back to normal after you've scanned. Your computer must be set so that it first tries to boot up the computer from the optical disk. If your computer ignores the disk and boots straight to the operating system like normal, you need to change the settings in your computer's BIOS. This is what my BIOS screen looks like. Along the bottom are the keys to push to get into the BIOS. You'll have to determine how to get into the BIOS for your own computer and what to do when you get there yourself. Maybe watch another tutorial that explains it. Those steps are beyond the scope of this tutorial. This screen means that your computer has started to boot from the optical drive. Note the countdown and that you only have a few seconds to press any keyboard key to continue with Kaspersky. If you don't, it's back to Windows. If you see Windows start after the Kaspersky screen, it means that you weren't quick enough. Try again. If you were quick enough, you now have to use the up, down, and enter keys to choose which language to use. Press 1 to accept the license agreement. Choose Graphic Mode. Now the Kaspersky operating system loads. And now Kaspersky is finding the internet through your wired connection. The Kaspersky Rescue Disk screen pops up automatically. If you somehow lose it, just click on the bottom K on the left side of the screen to get it back. There are some laptop systems, such as Acer, that will pop up a BIOS window around this point. It requires you to issue an OK to continue with the Rescue Disk. If you don't, the disk may give you a virus database corrupted message and you won't be able to use the disk.
mouse click on the Update Center tab for the latest virus definitions. It is possible to scan at this point with the definitions on the disk if you absolutely cannot update the definitions. It's better than nothing but not recommended. It shouldn't be because you're too hasty or lazy to do it right. Click on Start Update. If it says your virus definitions are corrupted, you may not have clicked on OK when your laptop's BIOS window popped up. You may need to exit Kaspersky, restart your computer, and try booting Kaspersky again. The Update button shows the update download progress. The update is now done. Click on the Scan tab. Kaspersky automatically checks the boxes for scanning the disk boot sectors and hidden startup objects, but you should also scan your Windows operating system partition. To find it, open the folders on the far left-hand side of the Kaspersky desktop. Look for the one that contains the 64-bit program files folder and or the 32-bit programs files folder the Users folder, and the Windows folder. On my machine, the Windows system drive is labeled C, and so I check that box. Your label may be different. Check the label that corresponds to it on your computer. Now you're ready to scan. Click on the Start Object Scan to start scanning. As Kaspersky scans, it shows its progress on the button. The scan may take a few hours. Kaspersky flashes an alert that it found my simulated Trojan virus. Now it has found my simulated infected file. Now the scan is done and Kaspersky wants you to decide what to do with the infections it found. This is the infected file. It still has valuable data and the virus we want gone. Choosing disinfect will strip out the virus and leave an uninfected file. We still want the data and Kaspersky recommends disinfect, so we click that. Now Kaspersky wants you to decide on what to do with the Trojan virus. There is no data or file to salvage, it's all just virus. So we could delete it, but to show how Kaspersky works, choose disinfect again. Disinfection doesn't work because a Trojan is only virus. There is nothing to salvage. Now click on delete. Kaspersky deletes the virus, finishes up, and returns to the object scan window. I disinfected one simulated file and deleted a simulated virus. Your process will vary according to what you find on your computer. Click on Quarantine. Click on the Status tab. I don't understand their message. We did detect and fixed two threats. Now click on the Report tab. Shows two threats. Click Detailed Report Open the entry. This shows the activity in detecting and deleting the viruses. Close the detailed report and close again. Click on exit and now yes. Mouse over to the blue square in the lower left hand corner and click for a menu. Choose either restart or shutdown and click. Click on yes and you're done. Eject the disk if it doesn't automatically inject. Restart your computer. I recommend a follow-up safe mode scan with your native antivirus and even malware bytes. The idea is you've disinfected the blocking viruses and now your computer should be able to clean itself. This is the most powerful antivirus scanning technique short of pulling the hard drive and attaching it into another computer and scanning from that computer and Kaspersky is one of the most popular antivirus rescue disks. If you want, uh, you could scan with another antivirus rescue disk to be even more thorough. In the future, be careful not to install Foistware or third-party or additional unintended software when you're installing that great freeware onto your computer. The install screens can be a shell game, and if you lose, it's maybe even back to the antivirus rescue disk. Another thing that will cause you problems is looking for U.S. copyrighted pay-for content for free. If you do find it, it will be in a risky overseas website, and especially if they want you to install some kind of special player, and then you'll be in big trouble because you put it there, you installed it, you sandbagged your own antivirus systems, 
and it'll bring along all its bits friends. I've seen a client do this over and over and over and over again. So, learn from your mistakes, think before you do, and be safe.